Okay, so they will give you the regression line in the question. You won't have to calculate that yourself. But what you will need to do is you will need to interpret the values of A and B, of this part and of this part here. And interpret, remember what that means. It means explaining something in the context of the question. So here is a terrible answer. How do we interpret the y-intercept of 20? We, If we just said it is where the line of best fit, it is where the line crosses the y-axis, this is an absolutely terrible answer because it's not explaining anything. It's just talking about the graph. We need to put it into the context of the question. So let's think about what it's talking about. The time spent revising in hours x. Well, if it's telling me that it's crossing here at 20, this tells me that if someone spent no time revising, we would expect them to get an exam mark of 20. That's a proper interpretation of this. So how do we interpret the y-intercept of 20? This is the mark. We would expect someone to get if they did zero hours or no revision. So explain it, okay? What does this 20 mean? Well, it means if X was zero, that would be the amount of, that would be the mark that we would expect someone to get. And then how do we interpret the gradient of three? Well, think about what gradient actually means. Gradient means that every increase in X of one unit, Y increases by three. And it's an increase of three because of the plus there. Obviously, if it was a negative, it would have been a decrease. So what does this mean in the context? It means for every one hour of, of revision, for every one hour of revision, the exam mark increased by three marks. Because this is what it is in the context of the graph. Every time you move across one space for x, it goes up three for y. So every time you go one hour of revision, the exam mark increased by three marks. And that's it. That's all you need to do for an interpretation of those values. So let's have a look at this one that we've got here, and it's to do with the large data set. So from the large data set, the daily mean wind speed, W knots, and the daily maximum gust were recorded for the first 15 days of May in May in Camborne in 2015. The data was plotted on a, on a scatter diagram. Describe the correlation between daily mean wind speed and daily maximum gust. Well, if we're talking about how windy something is, the daily mean wind speed, that's the average wind speed, and the maximum gust was like how strong the strongest blow of wind was. So they're probably going to be correlated to each other, and we can see it in the graph here that they appear to have a positive, and I think this is a pretty strong, it's difficult to say, but you could say, you could claim weak, but I'm going to say that this is a strong positive correlation. If I was going to interpret this, if it said interpret, then I would say that, um, maybe we should say this, strong positive collision, it's describing the, this. So I'm going to make it extra clear. Let's say for part A of the question, dot, dot, dot. The higher the mean wind speed, the higher the daily maximum gust. Now, I'm not sure it needed that because it was asking you to describe the correlation, but I thought I'd interpret it as well, just to make sure that we get that extra mark. Okay, it then says that the equation of the regression line, g on w for these 15 days, is g equals 7.23 plus 1.82 w. Now, it's, notice that g is in the y place and w is in the x, which is why it's kind of like this. It's like y equals 7.23 plus 1.82 x. Give an interpretation of the value of the gradient of this regression line. So the gradient of this regression line is the 1.82 that we've got here. This means that for every, or for an increase in one knot in mean wind speed,
the maximum gust increases by 1.82 knots. And this part would be if there was a daily wind speed of zero, the maximum gust is 7.23. But that doesn't really make sense because if there's a if the daily mean speed is zero, how could there be a maximum gust? And we're going to talk about why that bit shouldn't be done, why we shouldn't make a prediction for something that's outside of the data range in just a second. Now, part C of the question says, justify the use of a linear regression line in this instance. And I think the reason that we can do a linear regression line in this instance is because there is a strong positive correlation. They look like they are along a straight line here. So justify the use of a, of a linear regression line in this instance. The points are strongly correlated and close to the line and close to a straight line. So a linear model is suitable. Or we could say the word justified. So it says here that the stronger the linear correlation, the more suitable a linear regression line is. If they're really close to the line, then that's good for linear. If they don't look like they're close to a line, we shouldn't use a linear regression model. OK, so I'm just going to pause the video there and we're going to do one bit about, um, about how we should be careful of a couple of things with correlation.